Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zach and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Um, so this is a really great at home experiment you can do from um, a lot of different things you'll find you covered so it's nothing too nasty so there's nothing to worry about safety wise. Um, it's also especially great because now that we're um, all still in a bit of isolation uh, it's nice to do some practical chemistry at home. Um, so and also we'll be covering a few of the topics involved with the reaction including a little bit of stoichiometry um, enthalpy, solubility, and exothermic reactions. So with that being said, let's find out what we actually need. Okay, so for the actual equipment uh, slash uh, reagents that we're going to need for this experiment, um, we'll be using a set of scales that don't have to be very exact. This one doesn't have any decimal points. Um, so, you know, don't worry too much about that. Um, a funnel, a vessel that you can actually store the solution in, uh, your vinegar, which is your acetic acid. Um, and I'm using this one specifically because you can buy this one from you know, your local supermarket and it is um, written as 8%. So we need to know that specific concentration in order to calculate how much our bicarb soda we'll need. So that's why I'm using this one. We know it's 8%, it's reliable. Um, next, as I've said before, is bicarb soda, which is just our sodium bicarbonate and that's our other main reagent for our reaction. Um, finally, we just have the pot that we're going to do the heating in and our heating vessel, which is um, the stove in this instance. And finally, um, definitely probably our most important equipment is our PPE. So as I've said before, this isn't a very dangerous reaction, so we don't really have to worry about anything too nasty, but we're still dealing with uh, very hot liquids and things like that. So it's also very important to have your glasses, your lab coat on and make sure you're wearing good shoes. So as you can see here, some very nice leather shoes. So for the equation um, of our reaction, we have one mole of acetic acid reacting with one mole of sodium bicarbonate to form one mole of our sodium acetate product, one mole of water and one mole of CO2. Okay, so we know it's a one to one molar ratio. So first things first, we need to calculate the amount of uh, moles of acetic acid present. So we have an 8% uh, solution, so that means 8 grams per 100 ml. We had 1,000 mils of that solution, so 80 grams of acetic acid. Um, we convert that to moles, so 80 grams over the 60.06 grams per mole, which gives us 1.332 mole of acetic acid. Using stoichiometry, we get 1.332 mole of sodium uh, bicarbonate required. So then just converting that back to grams, we have 1.332 mole times 84.01 grams per mole gives us 111.90 grams of sodium bicarbonate needed. And then we round that off, that gives us to uh, 112 grams. Okay, so now that we know how much bicarb soda we're going to need to fully react with the acetic acid within the vinegar, um, we can go ahead and weigh those reagents and then put them into the pot so that they can react together. Also, I will stress this, um, it's very important to make sure you don't uh, put too much bicarb in because this is the result. So basically what happens is if you don't get a nice solution of sodium acetate, we get a clump of um, basically what is bicarb soda at the bottom there. So we want to make sure we use roughly the same amount. Okay. So now that we know how much bicarb soda we're going to need to fully react with the acetic acid present in the vinegar, we can go ahead and weigh those reactants out and then put them in the pot to react. Okay, so now that we've done our calculations, um, we know that the acetic acid present within the vinegar is the limiting reagent. So since we're going to use all of the acetic acid present within the vinegar, um, we only have to weigh out how much bicarb we're going to use and we calculated that to be 112 grams. So what we do is we put our vessel on the way um, and then we make sure we have to tear it so that we're measuring the bicarb soda, not just uh, the bicarb and the cup. Okay. There we go. So 113 is within the ballpark and that serves our purpose well enough. So now comes the actual reaction. Um, so first things first, we want to put our vinegar in, and we're gonna put all of it in, but it's also really important to note that we are, the heat isn't on the stove at the moment, because the first reaction itself is gonna create a lot of gas, 
um, in water and we don't want to make it any larger than it already would. And if we had it uh, heated, the reaction would be a lot quicker and a lot more gas would be evolved. So in goes the vinegar. And next we are going to put in our bicarb soda little by little, making sure that it doesn't overflow in the pot. Okay, so as we can see, the reaction has almost gone to completion. So there are still some bubbles being produced, uh, some gas bubbles of CO2, um, but for the majority of it, it has almost gone to completion. So nowhere near as much gas produced as we saw initially. So now is a really great time to turn on the heat and we will attempt to turn this undersaturated solution of sodium acetate into the super saturated solution of sodium acetate. So as we have turned on the heat, um, we see that a bit more uh, gas is being produced. And the reason for this is because as we add heat um, to the reaction, the reaction speed will increase. Um, so any leftover sodium bicarbonate in that pot is now um, reacting with that acetic acid to form the sodium acetate, which is the product that we are looking for in this reaction. So now the aim of heating this solution now is, as I've said before, is to get rid of the excess water in this solution. So we want to make it super saturated. We want to make as much uh, sodium acetate in that as possible. Now this process might take um, a long while, but while we do that, we can prepare uh, the method we're going to use to cool it back down at the end. So the way to tell when we have the amount of solution that we want, uh, the easiest way is to tilt uh, the liquid, tilt the solution, and we should see some crystals forming on the side. Now at the moment we've still got a way to go, but we'll check back in about five to 10 minutes and we'll see how we go. So we've been hitting the solution for around 30 minutes now. And as you can see, there's been a quite significant decrease in the volume of the solution. So we're gonna give it about maybe five-ish more minutes and then we're gonna do a quick test to see how close we are to our super saturated solution. Okay, so it's been another 10 minutes and now we know that it's pretty much ready by tilting it and then if we wait a few seconds we see that some of those crystals will form so those streaks that you can see there those are all sodium acetate crystals and because they form so quickly and so readily that means that our solution is pretty much ready so now we are going to pour our reduced solution into our vessel and i've also got some ice cubes there and the intent for this is to cool down our solution and we do that so that we can actually reduce the solubility of the solution and also note that when you would usually rinse things out like in this pot to get all of our product there we don't actually do this time because if we rinse this with water and put that in that would um, kind of undo all the work we did get it out of getting rid of all that water Now in the pot that we just emptied um, will be some of the leftover solution. And we can see here that there's now just a huge bunch of crystals in there. And we can actually use these crystals later on to see the reaction. So the solution has been in the ice bath for about, about one hour now. And so if we feel the temperature on the side, we feel that it's pretty, pretty cold. Um, and that's a good sign that it is ready. So now this hopefully should be a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Now the fun part is we actually get to test it out and see if it worked. Okay, so here is our solution of super saturated sodium acetate. Now you notice that the color is a little bit different on the two jars on the left. And the reason for this is that I boiled off the solution a bit more just to make sure that the solution would work. Uh, also, I'll note that usually a sodium acetate solution is clear, um, but it's usually this brown color, probably because of the contaminants in the uh, the products that I, or the reagents that I used. Um, the other thing I want to note is that on the jar on the right here, it was intended originally to be a, uh, a solution we could use, but what happened is when I poured the solution in, there must have been a little bit of crystal left over from when I last did this experiment, and so uh, the entire solution just crashed down as soon as I put it in there. So it's really important to make sure that all your glasses are clean so that your solution doesn't immediately crash out when you put it into um, a jar or vessel. 
Okay, so now is our first of two demonstrations of the sodium acetate solution. So what we want to do first is just to demonstrate the exothermic properties of this reaction. We have a thermometer, stick thermometer. So we're going to stick that in to see the current uh, temperature of the solution. Okay, so it's holding steady at 14 degrees Celsius. So that's the initial temperature of the solution. Now what we want to do is clean this off again and then coat the tip in some crystals and then we can seed out that reaction and then we can measure the temperature again. Okay, so using our crystals that we got from the bottom of the pan before, we can just coat the tip of the thermometer um, in the crystals and that's that small amount is all we need. And then all we have to do is put that thermometer in and then we can watch as that whole solution crashes out. And we see that we have a final solution left um, at 33 degrees Celsius. And so that means we definitely know that this crystallization process is an exothermic reaction. Okay, so now this second reaction, which is probably my favorite of the two, uses the exact same process. So what we want to do instead of putting our crystal into the solution, we put a bit of crystal down first. And what we do is we just pour the solution top, on top of it. So what's going to happen is that solution is still going to react the exact same way. As soon as the solution touches the crystal, um, more crystal will be formed. And this is the end result. Okay, so now that we've done all of our reactions, we need to do a cleanup. What's really great about this is that all we have to do for this is put all of our crystals back into a pot and basically heat them up again until we get that solution again. And that is all we have to do. And of course, cleaning up your workstation and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is all from me. Um, I hope you found this video a bit entertaining and you might have learned something new or just fun to watch. Um, if you guys have any other ideas about some experiments you wanna see, um, please let us know. Um, other than that, I hope you all have a really good break and that you're all staying safe.